Voters across the state turned out for Oklahoma's primary runoff election Tuesday night to decide who will advance to the November general election. We have results in the race for U.S. Senate, state superintendent, and several propositions and other races as well. So let's get right to it. We're going to start with the race to replace retiring Senator Jim Inhofe. Mark Wayne Mullen defeated T.W. Shannon with 65% of the vote. Mullen received an endorsement from former President Donald Trump. Now, Mullen says he will keep fighting for Oklahomans. They're trying to change the foundation that this country was built on. They're trying to discourage you and almost make you feel bad because you're a world changer, you're a go-getter, you're an entrepreneur, you're successful, or you just want to be left alone. His opponent, T.W. Shannon, says he will fully support Mullen in the general election this November. And Mullen will go up against Democrat Kendra Horn in November. And this morning, we've invited her to join us from Oklahoma City. Thanks for being here. And Kendra, let's talk a little bit of primaries over. All eyes are on the general. You know who your competition is. And a lot of people would say it's an uphill battle because it's been a very long time since Oklahoma has voted a Democrat into the U.S. Senate. What are your thoughts on that? Well, good morning. Good to be here with you. Uh, it has been a long time, uh, and I'm no stranger to uphill battles. Uh, in 2018, when I won the 5th Congressional District, it was because uh, we reached out to Oklahomans, uh, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, and built a coalition because Oklahomans are tired of the finger-pointing and the name-calling and the excuses for not getting things done. They want somebody that's going to work together and work for them, not for a party or a person. And what are some of the, the biggest issues that you would uh, take on if you are elected? Yeah, there's a, so many issues that are facing our, our, our country and our state today. Uh, the biggest thing that I hear from Oklahomans across this state is that they are tired of the divisiveness. When I was in Congress, in my uh, term in Congress, I reached across the aisle. I was a problem solver. I got 25 bills signed into law. I'm really proud of my track record working on uh, serving on House Armed Services. Uh, as you know, uh, Senator Inhofe has served on Senate Armed Services, and it's so important for us to protect our nation's military. But right now we're also facing challenges of rising prices and inflation and uh, the need to ensure that we have the basic services protecting Medicare and Social Security. I know that we can get a lot done, but we have to have people that are there to work for Oklahomans, not a political party. What separates you, do you think, from uh, Congressman Mullen? Uh, obviously, you both have served in, in the United States Congress. Uh, what are some of the differences that you think you'll be bringing to the side? I think I, I think there's a number of things that I bring to the table, especially uh, my my ability to reach across the aisle. Now I'm no stranger to pulling up a seat at the table and rolling up my sleeves and staying there until we get things done. Uh, I was incredibly uh, successful at doing that and reaching out and making sure that Oklahomans uh, know that they have uh, they will have a senator who is accessible, who is willing to talk to anyone regardless of their political party. I've held 54 town halls during my term in Congress and I've had town halls across the state here because real Oklahomans know that we have to talk to each other. We have to listen to each other and we need elected officials who are going to do the same. I'm not afraid to talk to anyone or answer the hard questions or work with people because we've got to get back to that place where it's not pointing fingers, it's compromise and consensus and getting things done because it's the right thing to do. And that's the bottom line uh, right now that, that Oklahomans and Americans need. A moment ago, you mentioned inflation. Uh, it's the highest it's been in 40 years. What are you going to do? Do you have a plan in place to lower inflation? Uh, you're right. Inflation is, is an incredible problem. Uh, we've been seeing it at the gas pump, and I know we're all feeling it at the grocery store. I am uh, when, when we go uh, and shop elsewhere. Look, inflation is, is challenging. But there are a number of things we, we can and we must do. Uh, we, we've, got to, we've got to keep working to have smart policies that invest in opportunities for quality and good-paying jobs. Things like uh, the bipartisan infrastructure package that passed last year. I would have voted for that uh, if, if I were still in Congress. Uh, and Mark Wayne voted against it. Uh, things like the CHIPS Act, which is a major investment, a bipartisan bill and a major investment in high-tech manufacturing, good-paying jobs, but it's also a national security issue. Again, something I would have voted for and that, that, that Mark Wayne voted against. The bottom line is this. We are only going to be able to steady the ship by being fiscally responsible and, and making sure that people have opportunities uh, and, and not just letting things... Uh, 
letting things sit out there and point fingers at each other. That is how we're going to reduce inflation, investing in the core issues and making sure that we are being responsible. That's why the provision in the most recent uh, bill that requires the biggest corporations across this, across this globe to pay a minimum tax because capitalism only works if everybody is doing their part. Kendra, we appreciate your time this morning and we'll see how no, uh, November it'll be here in 76 days. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much.